and now we see the man putting his hands up. He is going to be complying here. This all coming to an end here in the South LA area. LAPD officers from the 77th Division taking that, that man into custody now. The driver of the car that police are chasing right now, it's a four-door sedan, and this person is now going westbound 670 through downtown. They just got off northbound 71, but now they're continuing 670 here uh, during a really busy part of the rush hour. You can see them going in the shoulder right now as they move into the Kansas area now. So this person has gone from the Missouri side to the Kansas side, and really, I mean, they're, they're not stopping at all. This is rush hour right now, folks. So this is not a good time for someone to be trying to evade police. It's, it's dangerous, not only for folks who are on the road, just innocent people here. Not only are they gonna, they gonna have KCMO police chasing, but they're also gonna have folks from the Kansas side, possibly KCK, also possibly the Kansas Highway Patrol chasing after this suspect. Looks like they might be exiting here at this point along I-70. Looks like they are exiting here. Not sure where they're going. We're going to work on that location there to bring that to you. They are exiting here, pulling off on a ramp. We'll just watch it as this unfolds. At least they're getting away from folks who are in rush hour traffic right now. I guess that is maybe some good news, but you never know when they go into a residential area and zoom through an intersection just like that, what can happen? Doesn't look like they're stopping anytime soon. All right, here we go. Maybe a possible residential area. We are also helping out police as well as this person is trying to get away. I'm not sure what area this is. It looks like kind of an abandoned area. They're turning around, and this is the old Indian Springs Mall. And you know what? They're going to be driving right back into police because police were right behind them. And it, you know, it can't be very, can't be, can't be great for them if they're going to be driving back towards police. So it looks like Chopper 5 is just tracking this suspect as they're trying to get away from police. Chopper 5 is above this suspect, and we are going to wait to see how this ends up. It looks like they're getting back onto a feeder. It looks like this is going to be I-70 again. So they're hopping on to the main road, 522, the middle of rush hour. And now they're going to be weaving in and out of traffic here. So they're westbound I-70 at 38th now. So they're hopping on to I-70. And we don't see police behind them at this point. So this person has gone from the shoulder on the left, shoulder on the right, middle. Here we go. Back to the shoulder on the left. Zooming in and out. This person is heading westbound I-70. And it started a little after 5 o'clock. So it's 523, almost 524 right now. And they are continuing to drive recklessly all throughout town, not only in Missouri, but also in Kansas. Now they're exiting off of I-70. Maybe they can find another, you know, residential area or area because they didn't really have success. So they're on the 57th Street exit right now in KCK. And they're going to run into some problems. Here's a semi, a bus, blowing through that intersection at 57th in KCK just off of I-70. Here's another intersection blowing through that one. Now they are southbound on 57th and they're merging onto another road here. So they've just gotten off the highway. They're in K32 westbound. And we can tell you that police are following, but they're in unmarked police cars. The driver is now near Edwardsville trying to figure out what to do. At this point, we know obviously one person is in the car. We don't know if anyone else is in the car. And now it's going on a one-way street here into oncoming traffic. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. People are just getting out of the way. What else can they do, you know? All right. Well, now he's on the, the right side of the road. Our chopper, of course, is tracking the driver. We're not sure why. And there's a cop. Okay, so we got a cop here. And maybe they'll do a little pit maneuver here to try to get this guy. There's the pit maneuver. All right. Okay, so now this is this is where we got to figure out what's going to happen. This is on Caw Drive, so we know that that pit maneuver happened on Caw Drive. And we're just waiting to see if this person will get out and surrender peacefully. That would be the smart thing to do. All right, let's see what they're going to do. Hands up.
hands up. Looks like one person, just one person. And he's smoking. He is smoking a cigarette. Nonchalantly smoking a cigarette. His face is down. He's surrendering. I'm gonna have one last cigarette before he goes to jail. Peaceful surrender here. A Kansas Highway Patrol trooper used a maneuver to bump him off the road. Now, this chase went right through the heart of the downtown loop in the middle of rush hour. Witnesses say it was surreal and shocking to see. I've seen this I think kind of commotion in my rearview mirror, and all of a sudden here comes this kind of, I'd say it was blue or purplish colored Ford car come around me. A robbery suspect leading police on a chase. Is this real? Um, is this really taking place right now? And the timing couldn't have been worse. Yeah, I was like, holy crud. He almost caused several arrests right in, right in front of me. And, you know, rush hours happening anyway. There's all, already a lot of traffic and then you got some crazy man coming through there at a high rate of speed. The chase started at 27th and Paseo in Kansas City. Weave through the east side through downtown, crossing the state line, and ended up on 32 Highway in Kansas. Police cars were right on my tail, so I pulled over to the right side of the road, and I got a front row seat to the arrest. The driver got out, hands raised, and immediately laid on the ground as officers approached. It was kind of shocking. It was a pretty surreal experience, and that was the first car chase I've ever witnessed. Andy, we actually have breaking news here out of South Suburban. We're in the area of Country Club Hills heading down to Matson. We've got a high-speed pursuit here. Uh, the person that they're looking for here in this black Chevy, a stolen vehicle with a window shot out. They've been pursuing this vehicle now for the better part of about 15 minutes. Southbound in the cornfield here, right by Harlem Avenue, heading towards US 30. This vehicle is heading southbound. These are side streets, people, with about 20 to 30 mile an hour. Now we're going south on Ridgeland, south on Ridgeland here. We picked up that they were looking for this vehicle. The uh, Chicago District of the State Police found this vehicle, and we picked it up a few minutes later. Now it's traveling about 60, 70 miles per hour southbound on Ridgeland Avenue. How fast do you think that guy's going, Mike? Based on how fast we're going right now, I would say about 80 to 90 miles an hour. Again, uh, caution for people who are watching here. This can result in an accident pretty quickly. Dolly crosses Creek Morning Road. Try to turn. Oh, and there's the accident. All right, so here's the accident. I believe we're at Creek Morning Road. Uh, the vehicle involved in the accident. Now you've got the person who was in the vehicle. This is the suspect that they were looking for. That car crashed and tried to make the turn there at the intersection. It looked like the one person who was in that car bailed and is now running. Now it's into, a, basically, you can see a field with a lot of trees. We are near the expressway. We're okay, just west of I-57 here by Crete uh, Money Road. Uh, we're not sure if this person okay, is injured. Uh, now it looks like he may be exhausted. And, yeah, the uh, suspect hey, may have been injured. And the uh, person on the ground, right, it looks the like the pursuit has come to an end here. Wow. Uh, again, we've got state troopers, and we had a lot of folks. Uh, this started in the Country Club Hills area and uh, has come to an end here. We're near Creek Money Road. We are just west of I-57. a chase right now involving OHP troopers. You can see this high-speed chase uh, down I-44 near the Amarillo Junction. Jim is over ahead. Jim, uh, this has just been going on for the last few minutes. Uh, this guy's booking it. Well, that's right. We were in pursuit of, uh, we'll see, you come out of the trees right there. He went off. Looks like uh, somebody went up, went off the road right there. We're catching up to him. We just passed south. Uh, we're coming up on southwest 82nd, going southbound on I-44 here. Just to put this into perspective, Jim is in the fastest chopper in this market, and he's having trouble keeping up with this high-speed per pursuit involving OHP and that white vehicle. It looks like that he's coming up on the big bridge there on the south side of Oklahoma City, and now the lanes are opening up just a little bit. Earlier, as we were watching, as this pursuit just started, it looked like one car might have been run off the road, but here's the bridge on the south side of the metro, 
And uh, it looks like the Highway Patrol car... OHP trooper car. Oh, he blew a tire out. The trooper car blew a tire out. That is not good news. Let's see if... Right, the OHP SUV just lost a tire. Now, we are, yeah. right now, we're about a mile behind this car. The shot is still on this uh, guy. Will Rogers airspace, so we can... Uh, That's right. Oh, and it just down. exited whoa, off. Whoa, 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 whoa. almost whoa. lost it on the off-ramp right there. That's going into the, the tunnel. Oh, oh, my SUV. goodness. Uh, one, oh, two, three. He rolled, he rolled. He's rolled four times. Oh, he rolled right there. He was traveling but, at a uh, high rate of speed and took that 108 exit. Went around pretty hard. Stay with him. Oh, he got out. Well, he's running now. Goodness. The suspect is running. He's crossing the... Oh, goodness. Okay, he's from oh, behind the business there. Right we got there. an OHP uh, SUV. He's closing in on him. It appears to be a, a woman. It God, appears to be a woman that's running. Oh, here, goodness. she's trying to... The trooper's oh, going to apprehend her right here. All right. Right behind the fence here. They got her. Oh, that's good. I don't know if this person's armed or what uh, what she had or whatever, but uh, right now we are, uh, we are sitting right here. It's going to be... Uh, basically, uh, it's going to be uh, north uh, Northwest 32nd Street or... Yeah, North East North 34th Street, around in that area. This off-ramp looked like going towards Tuttle. And amazingly, Amanda and Carl, that woman gets out of that car relatively unhurt and takes off running. Bob Mills, Sky News 9 HD, the only news chopper in the air as that chase plays out on live TV. They've reached uh, speeds over 100 miles an hour here. Uh, Jim Gardner and Bob Mills, Sky News 9 HD, first in the air. The chase started on I-4 eastbound at Yukon to Highway 44 westbound. An OHP trooper on the tail of the suspect for several minutes before his rear tire blows out on the highway. Oh, he blew a tire out. The trooper car blew a tire out. That is not good news. Let's but we stayed with the car. Sky News 9 is about a mile behind. At this point, speeds are well over 120 miles per hour. The silver sedan flying by cars on the shoulder at dangerous speeds. Then this. Oh! Oh, my SUV. goodness. Uh, one, oh, two, three. He rolled, he rolled. He's rolled four times. Oh, he rolled right there. The driver takes exit 108 towards Newcastle and loses control. But it wasn't over yet. This woman jumps out the car and takes off trying to get away from troopers. It appears to be a, a woman. It God. appears to be a woman that's running. We saw her cross the road and they started pulling up in the here. And she didn't make it far. Troopers were close behind and she was arrested. It was, it was wild. We didn't know what it was at first. That's the most action Newcastle seen in a while, I guess. We're told there may have been another woman inside that car. She was placed in a neck brace and taken to a local hospital. As far as we know, no age OHP troopers were hurt. The woman would not stop her, told because uh, for, uh, for a, a traffic violation. Okay, Evan, and the Oklahoma Standard is showing up right in the middle of the crime scene. A good Samaritan actually stopped to help OHP change the blown-out tire on their SUV. We know that trooper was not injured. It is rush hour here, kind of maneuvering around now, taking a little detour, getting back. Now we're actually on the sidewalk. Obviously, this is a little bit dangerous right here, going on into incoming tri uh, this is a truck. You can see that they're going wow. against traffic. We believe this is in St. Louis County. We have uh, Steve Myers up in Bomberito Automotive Sky Fox who's been following this. We were told originally this was on Interstate 70, but now clearly they're off and they're going through busy intersections right now, barely missing cars. I don't see Yeah, Mandy, that... actually we're on Olive Boulevard Go right ahead, now. We're, we just passed uh, 270 and we're rolling down Olive at this point. We're coming up to Ballast there which is where you see this truck, and he's, uh, he's uh, gone through the intersection. You can see a police car chasing him there. I only noticed one at this point. This is a robbery suspect from St. Charles County. Uh, certainly you can see the kind of traffic chances this individual is taking here as we approach. Uh, I think that's Dealman, but I am not, I'm not certain about that. We're going to hit another, another serious uh, road here, and, and, and we are now headed uh, straight across. I don't know where this area is. Looks like we're headed into a residential area full of uh, apartments. Steve, how long and have we'll you been with this chase? We'll try and stay with chase? this guy. Uh, obviously, we have a little bit of a problem here with the, with the trees, but we're going to try and try and hang with them here so we uh, figure out where where this individual goes. Uh, besides, across the grass and onto another road. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's the thing about a, a truck this large. They're going to carve out their own path if necessary. And we are back on the road again. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know which one it is, but uh, oh my, here oh, we he go. Oh, yeah, he is, just crashed. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty hard hit against that wall and the car into this home. Uh, obviously, we're crawling out on the on the side here. Uh, 
person seems to be getting on the ground. We and can see the police officers surrounded. there. The police and got there very quick. Breaking live on Channel Two. You know this this. Uh, pushed in that garage door there with the car and uh, we have uh, police officers there with weapons drawn person is on the ground at least at this stage of the game uh, I think they are getting ready to uh, cuff this individual and they have the situation under control and it also appears you know, I guess there was just one suspect I'm curious how long were you following that chase oh I think we were on it uh, probably uh, about a minute minute and a half before you guys came to us They tell us that the uh, suspect is actually a danger to herself. They get that information from the LAPD. LAPD first started this chase somewhere in the west end of the San Fernando Valley near Roscoe and Winnetka. They had information suggesting that the female driver was a danger to herself, possibly suicidal. They tried to get her to pull over. It didn't happen. And then down by LAX, LAPD pulled off. The California Highway Patrol, they took over. And we've tracked this thing coming down from LAX on the 405 out of LA County through Orange County, past the El Toro Y out of San Clemente, and then uh, just past the San Clemente Pier a little beyond that. That's where you hit the San Diego County line. Breaking news, and we have our signal back now in San Diego County where that pursuit continues. It started in the uh, western San Fernando Valley and has continued now into uh, the San Diego County, Oceanside, and perhaps south of there at this point. Bill Thomas is in Air 7 HD over this pursuit of a woman in a white SUV. Bill? Yeah, it's so dark out here right now. It's so dimly lit. It's hard to tell exactly where they're at other than north of San Diego County, southbound on Interstate 5. The uh, Camp Pendleton airspace is uh, controlling this area right now, so they're keeping us off of the pursuit by about a mile offshore. We are looking into the freeway, though. I think this female driver may have hit a spike strip just a short while ago. We saw some sparks coming up from the front end of the car, so the driver may have lost at least one tire. And you can see that first CHP officer just behind her by about a quarter of a mile, and there are a number of other additional CHP officers behind that driver. And then there are two police helicopters overhead. There's a CHP helicopter. He's off to our left. And then the Orange County Sheriff's Department, they have Duke One right on top. So there's really nowhere for that suspect to go. As soon as the uh, Camp Pendleton Tower lets us in, we'll get a little bit closer and see what she's doing. But she may be finally slowing down. We're slowing down now, so apparently she is as well. But uh, once again, we were up to 120, had trouble catching up to her. Just a matter of time before that metal rim at those speeds on that concrete, it's going to generate a great deal of heat and friction. And I've seen these things go up in flames, and you lose a lot of stability, especially with that uh, moisture from a cell that did move through here a while ago. Uh, the freeway at this point, not exactly wet, just a little bit damp. But that's certainly not going to help that driver maintain stability on that car. And it looks like we're going to look at speeds of approximately 60, maybe 70 miles per hour. So she's really scaled back from where she was just a, a few short minutes ago. And it looks like she is uh, down now to about 45, maybe 50 miles per hour. She's got her hands out the window right now, but still moving at a pretty good clip. And you look around the car right now, you see all those windows are tinted. So officers are have a real difficult time to see who, if anybody else, is inside the car with that suspect. Hard to tell what, if that's just her arms or if she's putting her whole body, it looks like her whole body, her head, outside the driver's side window as she continues south by five. But uh, bit by bit, coming to a slow, uh, like she might be stopping right now. And you can see now that right Right front tire, it's just the rim. You can see the heat and a little bit of friction there. We saw some sparks a short while ago. Now we're down to about 15 miles per hour swerving. Suspect out of the uh, car, or her body is halfway out of the car. Now the door is open. She gets out and she is approaching officers. Very dangerous. Keep that shot a little wide for you right now because this could get real ugly. Looks like uh, they're going to try to take her down. They may have used some non lethal routes there to bring her down. She's down to the ground, so let's move back in. It's unclear what they did to get her down, but she is down on the ground. Looks like it's a taser. You see the officer with the, uh, the jacket, the one on his left. I can see the taser's up. The suspect is down. She'll be taken into custody momentarily. I can't tell you right now as they take that suspect into custody as we mentioned just a few minutes ago the whole interstate is shut down right now south i-5 just south of oceanside the freeway is closed once she's in cuffs and in a cruiser bit by bit they'll reopen all lanes here in northern san diego county from kprc channel 2 this is a breaking news alert Good morning to you. I'm Rachel McNeil. We're bringing you live pictures from Sky 2 right now. You see officers in chase. They have been chasing this pickup truck, this white pickup truck you see at the bottom of your screen there. Since about 9.30 this morning, this chase started around the area of the 2200 block of the South Hardy and has kind of snaked its way through downtown around to the Harrisburg Metro rail line over on the east end. And now you can see that they were on the north loop at Hardy Toll Road where this truck driver exited now on the feeder road you could see all those black and white units hpd officers in pursuit 
and it has slowed down quite a bit now that he's exited there onto the feeder road and you see him kind of moving around other cars not really going at a high rate of speed but certainly officers staying very very close behind but we kind of picked up word on it at about 9 30 and you can see this has been going on for about 20 plus minutes now and at some points we're told this driver was going the wrong way down some roads uh, we haven't heard any word of any injuries or anything like that you can see that he's getting off 45 now exiting an airline now you can see he's going pretty slowly and it looks like he may be either pulling over or trying to make a turn here by this cons going around traffic um, certainly not in any hurry Let's see how he gets through this intersection here. And you can see one driver there on the right as he kind of circles around him. And he is continuing, we're assuming it's a he, to drive down there. Do we know what street he turned on? He did make that turn, though, as you said. And you can see, oh, there he goes. He's now sandwiched between two civilian cars right there at that intersection. He may be done now. He, now, there, one's coming out on the right. You can see hands up in the air. Police officers on the left trying to get the driver out as well. One down on the ground as they're pulling the other one out. Cuffing him as well. Let's see if there's anyone else in that vehicle. The second suspect, the driver now on the ground. Again, these are live pictures you're looking at right now. This is the end of a police chase that started on Houston's north side at about 9.30. 25 minutes later, after snaking throughout the city, you can see that they have two suspects in custody.